Yo guys, let's talk about this thing called the blockchain. So if you've been following Bitcoin, you know that the price of Bitcoin has been rising and falling like crazy. Right now it's worth 10 thousand US dollars. But this technology that powers Bitcoin or technology that's behind Bitcoin is this thing called the blockchain. And blockchain is really cool within itself. And unfortunately it gets very overshadowed by Bitcoin because you know, $10,000. Blockchain is basically a uh, decentralized database. Um, many people call it a ledger. You can think of it like a shared ledger in which not one computer or what, not one company or not one entity owns all the data. Whenever you want to add items to a block, you must reach consensus of all the other nodes within the network. So this consensus is normally through the form of something called maybe a proof of work or a proof of stake system. And we're not going to go too much into proof of work or proof of stake, but basically with blockchain and uh, Bitcoin and proof of work, it's you basically doing this mathematical calculation when you add something in there. It's a very tedious mathematical calculation and finding a certain hash. And uh, once you get that, you know it's valid and you can add the block into a chain. And this also allows the blocks to easily be verified by any node on the network, which is a huge advantage of blockchain. So you might be seeing that blockchain is really pushing this whole idea of a decentralized authority in which everyone owns the data, anyone can verify at any moment, and we can verify the integrity of new blocks being added to this ledger. And finally, data on a blockchain is immutable. So once it's on there, you can't change it. So like I said, Bitcoin uses this technology and they have been very successful with it so far. Now there are a couple of problems that are starting to rise as far as the size of the blocks, but that's another issue. And blockchain is not just for a cryptocurrency, it has other use cases. However, a lot of people do try to use blockchain where you could just use a uh, shared database. So I would say in my opinion, blockchain is mostly useful whenever you wanna keep a record of something, a record that everyone has and can't be changed. So I think of things like maybe in a government affair or um, some type of city council thing where you want this data out for everyone to see and everyone to verify and you don't want this data changing. Um, so that's where blockchain really shines in that use case scenario. So with all that aside, let's talk about how to build your own blockchain. So for this video, I'm gonna use JavaScript and Node.js. You can also use pretty much any programming language to do this. You can use Python, Java, or whatever else you want. Now, like I said, we're not gonna be focusing on a proof of work or proof of stake system. We're just gonna be building a pure blockchain that you can add blocks to and uh, verify the integrity of the blocks. So guys, let's get to it. Let's start by creating a class called block.js. So within this class, what I did was I first imported the crypto library. You're gonna need this library in order to create an SHA-256 hash. Now within this class, I also have a constructor for the block class. So every block within a blockchain needs certain pieces of data. And what we need is that we need a index, a timestamp, the data that's actually going in there, and we also need a previous hash. So the previous hash is basically the hash of the previous block within the chain. So every block has the hash of the previous block. So again, within the block class, we have the constructor, and within the constructor, we pass in the data that we need, we assign it to the properties within the object, and then what we do is to calculate the hash for the block. So for calculating the hash, we call this method called calculate hash. And within calculate hash, what we do is we create a string, and this string combines the index, the previous hash, the timestamp, and the data. I am stringifying the data just because I don't know what the data is gonna look like. It might not be a string. So in any case, I'm just gonna stringify it just in case. So again, we combine all this information, we put it into this variable called string to hash, and finally, we use our crypto library to create a SHA-256 hash of that, digest it to hex, and we return it. So we return it to the hash. Finally, we do a module that export and call it block because we're using a class called block just so we can use it within other modules within Node.js. So this is what your basic block class will look like. It's creating a block, putting information that we need within a block, and creating hash for that block. Now, you're going to create a class called blockchain.js. So this blockchain class is basically what's going to hold the blockchain as well as give us functions to interface with the blockchain. So within this blockchain class, I first started by importing blockjs because we're going to need it to create new blocks. 
We have our blockchain class. We do not need to pass anything within the constructor. However, what we do is we create a chain. So in JavaScript, our only option for a chain is going to be an array. So we're going to create an array. And the first item in array has to be the Genesis block. And that is the first block within a blockchain. So what we do is we create a new block and we give it an index of zero because it's the first block within a blockchain. We give it a timestamp of UTC string. The data is going to be a simple string. I am the Genesis block. And then the previous hash is going to be zero because it's the first block within a blockchain. So there is no previous hash. Now we have this function called get previous hash. I'm going to come back to that function in a second. I'm going to skip down to this function called add block. So this will be self-explanatory. This function allows us to add blocks to the blockchain. So what we do is we take in some arbitrary data. And what we first do is create a timestamp. And again, that's going to be the UTC string. We're going to get an index. Now this index is going to be the chain dot length. So if we have two blocks in a blockchain, this new block is going to have the index of two. So again, this is going to be index of the new block. And now we have the previous hash. Now remember, I said every block in a blockchain needs to have the hash of the previous block in a blockchain. That's where we're using this get previous hash function. What this function is doing, it's going up here and is basically getting the latest block in the blockchain and returning its hash so that we can assign the previous hash to the latest block in the blockchain. So we have previous hash. And finally, we're going to create a new block with this information that we have. So we call the new block class. We pass it in the index, timestamp, the arbitrary data from up here, and then a previous hash. So now we have a new block. Now, before we add this block to the blockchain, we need to make sure that it's a valid block because if we start pushing invalid blocks to the blockchain, we're well, kind of defeating the whole purpose of a blockchain. So we call this function called isValid. So down here, isValid does a simple thing. It checks to see if the block is valid. So we pass in a new block. We get the current block in the blockchain. And then what we do is we do a couple of checks. We first check to see if the current block index plus one is equal to the new block index. So basically, if you're trying to add a block that does not have the right index, we're going to return false. Next, we check to see if the new block's previous hash is equal to the current block's hash. Again, if it's not, we return false. And finally, we do a sort of sanity check just to make sure that the new block's hash is equal to the hash that it should be. So maybe along the line, someone tried to change the hash of the block or change some data um, and doesn't have the right hash. So in any case, we return false if it's not the case. If everything works out, then we return true. So if new valid, so if is valid is true, then we push the block onto the blockchain. Otherwise, we just write out an error message saying invalid block. So finally, we create a final class called app.js. And this class is basically going to be our runner. So within this class, what we do is we import the blockchain class because we're going to create a new blockchain. So what we do is create a variable called my chain, initialize it to a new blockchain. And again, once we initialize it, it's going to create a Genesis block. From there, we add a block called I am the second block. And we add another block and we'll put the data in as I am the third block. So now we should have a blockchain with three blocks. Genesis block, we add a second block with some data, and a third block with some data. And finally, we're going to call print chain. And if you notice, in this function, I should scroll down a little bit more. In this class, we do have a function called print chain, which basically prints out the blockchain. So finally, we call mychain.printchain. So if we run this, we should get out the whole entire blockchain. We have three blocks as expected. The Genesis block does not have any previous hash. It has its own hash. Block one has a hash that refers to the previous hash and it has its own hash and has the data. Same thing for block two. And if we were to go into the blockchain class, and let's say we just mess up the previous hash. We give it some other value. Then we try running it. We're going to get an invalid block and we'll only have one block within the blockchain. So guys, this has been how to build a basic blockchain within JavaScript. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. I'll have the full tutorial over on my website, so definitely check that out, as well as the code on GitHub, so definitely check that out as well. 
So guys, tell me what you think in the comments below. Definitely hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Bye.